नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू दिस एक्साइटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ सत्तालॉजी डी बंकिंग मिथालॉजी सत्तालॉजी मीन साइंस ऑफ ट्रुथ स्टडी ऑफ ट्रुथ अपोजिट ऑफ दैट इज मिथालॉजी व्हिच इज साइंस ऑफ स्टडी ऑफ फेक लाइ और इमेजिनेशन सत्तालॉजी बिल्ड्स योर आइडेंटिटी एंड मिथालॉजी डिस्ट्रॉयज योर आइडेंटिटी मिथालॉजी इज यूजुअली कॉल्ड बाय द वेस्टर्न एकेडमिक्स फॉर द द हिस्ट्री ऑफ नेटिव कल्चर्स एनीथिंग like anything which uh, native american believes in their gods and goddesses are all considered mythology well i mean everyone has question then what is the biblical mythology which is followed from based on the native mythology including most of the functions in the christianism are coming from native worlds but anyway these are the world plays but they do play a very important role on our mindset and and they the words have to be used carefully otherwise we lose we actually call something which was real as something as unreal so i have very special guest and we are going to talk about calendars according to veda and also we are going to talk about the sun's movement and other things coming from vedas let us welcome without delay let us welcome dr ml raja namaskar so dr raja like you now the indian prime minister's popularity in the west is again being seen and which is a cause of uh, inspiration for many foreign leaders at the same time it is a big opportunity for them to ridicule india on other things because that's how the politics works that you do not accept everything you have to keep finding faults now the same thing happened with indian culture so everyone loves indian food and uh, in fact the uk is called the curry nation and they love south indian food especially tamil sambar they love it is one of the biggest delicacies there but they'll ridicule indian history oh that is all mythology so before you come start with your presentation what do you have to say on this hypocrisy because india is now slowly uprising as a global leader not only its prime minister even uh, india's culture heritage and knowledge wisdom and spirituality especially the spirituality spirituality it started influencing western world from since swami vivekananda so uh, most of the persons they are accepting it and but uh, many people won't accept other people's uh, superiority than them so that is a human tendency uh, even though they accept one part of the thing they want to ridicule other part that shows that they are not great persons like that it is a human nature uh, because of that only they are ridiculing but slowly initially during the immediate after the independence uh they will not realize that, that india's uh, economy or defense power or knowledge power they ridiculed everything except uh, swami vivekananda and other spiritual thing uh, they ridiculed everything now see for example uh in tashkent uh, between india and pakistan russia has to mediate now they want india to mediate that is the situation from 1965 to 2022 slowly the situation is changing so it will change most of, not all westerners are like that many people are like that only with that mindset they won't accept uh, in toto the india's knowledge wisdom and everything uh, in all fields yeah most of the western side other both they are accepting few things even that with on compulsion only they are accepting that also we should know yeah they will they will accept the pythagoras theorem comes from greece they will accept so they are coming closer to india gradually they are coming to greece now from greece to india is much shorter distance mm-hmm. <laughs> so gradually they are coming gradually over the years i mean i have seen the conscious movement now to earlier they called greek history as mythology but they forgot to realize that the entire vatican history is written based on greek history mm. <laughs> there is nothing if there is no greece there is no vatican 
so 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 now gradually they have to accept greece by force now since they have accepted greece now greek literatures very clearly mention that they all got everything from india they <laughs> very clear so so since they have come to greece now it's less like a to b to c so now the b is greece now and now they have to they have to move from greece to india which is they have they are they are uh, they have claimed many times yes go ahead what do you say Okay, shall I start presenting? Yes, please. Yes. And while Dr. Raja is presenting, I know it is very humorous for many of you that how we have reached Greece now, <laughs> but gradually it will come to it will cross Persia when they realize that Zoroastrians are all Hindus, and then they'll come to Persia to India slowly after that. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, Manakam, Namaskar. Uh, I express my wholehearted thanks to Sri Aditya Ji and volunteers of uh, Satala Ji and also the eminent professors, scholars, students of various universities of United States of America. Even though it is a very early hour in the morning, uh, they, attend, they are attending this lecture. It is really encouraging to me. And also uh, the scholars and students who are going to listen uh, this session in when it is uh, premiered in YouTube, I say vanakam and namaskar to one and all. Uh, in this uh, webinar, I am going to narrate about the accuracy of Indian calendar system. How Indian calendar system evolved and what are all the methods and types of its calculation how it is highly accurate, how it is natural and totally based on astronomy uh, and it has a high antiquity and even the time divisions are based on astronomy. That is the celestial movements of moon, earth, solar system and also Milky Way galaxy, <coughs> how it is a knowledgeable derivation with high clarity. That and all I am going to explain in these two lectures. <coughs> now it is part one. Part one will be uh, lectured in the uh, uh, near future. First evaluation. When you think about the evaluation of Indian calendar system, we go, as Aditya Ji told, it is all Veda. Uh, Veda is the base uh, for Indian calendar system. It is not only the base for Indian calendar system, even the concept of 360 degrees of angle of circle, uh, it only uh, uh, first proclaimed Veda only revealed uh, this concept of 360 degrees for an angle. Based on that only, uh, the 360 civil days of an year came. How? I will explain now. See, for example, we are uh, studying in mathematics. There are 360 degrees of angle for a circle. Why 360? Why not 500, 400 or 1000? If it is 1000, the calculations would have been much easier. Uh, 500, 250, 125, like that, it will be much easier. But why we are keeping it 360 degree? What is the base for that? Who developed this concept? On what basis that developed? That we have to analyze. Uh, if we analyze, it will reach to only one source, that is Veda. Veda are the oldest scriptures of the entire world. We can say Veda are Anadi and Sanatana, that is eternal, without beginning, without end, like Almighty. What is the root word for Veda is Vid. Vid means to know, to lay. Hence, Veda is full of knowledge and wisdom. Thus, Veda not only spiritual, it is scientific also, that we should understand. And for, this can be proved by many ways, but uh, coming to 360 degrees of angle, how Veda uh, gave that concept of 360 degrees of angle to the world, I will explain. Rigveda Samkhita, in the first mandalam, 164th Suttam, 48th mandram, it reveals Dvadasa Pradaya Chakram Ekam, Trini Nabhyani Ka Udachikeva. Tasmin Sakam Tri Sada Na Sankavo Atpidaha Krashtirna Chala Chala Saga. That is the mantra. 
What is the meaning? Dwadasa is told. Pradaya means the arcs of a circle. Uh, told arcs at the perimeter of the circle. Chakram means wheel. Yekam means one. One wheel. Trini means three. Nabhyani, the axles are, are center part of the wheel. Three sada. Three means uh, three. In uh, Sanskrit also, it is TRI three. Sada means hundred. Three sada, three hundred. Sashti. Shashti is 60, so 360. Sankabha is means spokes of a wheel. Chala chala saga means salaha achalaha. That means movable and immovable. Dark circle, the wheel is one, and three are the axes. Who indeed knows it? Within it are collected 360 spokes, which are as it were movable and immovable. That is the meaning of this mandra. This is the mantra, this is the meaning. So, I will explain with the pictorial re representation. This is one wheel, Chakram Ekam. Dvadasa Pradaya. Pradaya means arc. Uh, Dvadasa means toll. There are toll divisions of the perimeter of the wheel. Okay. At the uh, end part of the wheel, we are dividing into toll parts. That is toll ox, which is mentioned as Dwadasa Pradaya by this man, mantra. And the spokes, spokes from sun, the, these rays reaching there, they can be imagined as spokes of a wheel. This is a center part, and it has usually center part of the wheel has only one axle, but here it mentions three axles. Why it mentions three axles? I will explain. There are spokes of a wheel. So, how many spokes? 360 spokes. So, from that only 360 degree for a circle came. Why it mentions toll divisions and 360 spokes? What is the base for that? That I will explain. And another mantra mentioned, if you go through this mantra, what is 360? We can understand. Rigveda Samkhita, first mandalam, 164 suddham, the same suddham. 11th mantra, previous is 48th mantra, it is 11th mantra. Dvadasaram Naki Dajaraya, Varvarti Chakram Paridhyam Rudasya, Aputra Agne Mitunaso, Atra Sapta Sadani Vimsadicha Tastuku. That is the mantra. What is this? Dvadasaram. There are tul ox. And Aputra, son, Agne Mitunaso. It is worshipping Agni. Mituna means tin. So there are tin sons. Atra Sapta Sadani means Sapta means seven, Sada means hundred, seven hundred, Vimsadi means twenty. So seven twenty pairs are there. Pairs of sons. Eh? So meaning Dwadasa told Mithunaso sons in pairs, Sapta Sadani Vimsadi seven twenty. What is the meaning? The wheel of law with tul ox goes round and round the heaven. It is not indeed to be decayed. Here stand O Agni. The 720 suns in pairs. So 360 plus 360, so 720 pairs are there. What is that? 360 daytime and 360 night time equal to 720 day and night pairs. So it means 360 days. What is three axles? Here also supports this view because one wheel has usually one axle or one center point, but here it is three in Nabyani. That means three axes. That is three double seasons. Okay, there are six seasons in a year. Each has two months. So, three double seasons. That is the thing it mentions. So, it, because it mentions seasons and 720 day and night pair. So, it 360 not only mean the degrees of a circle, but also days of a year. One circle means one year. So, that is the thing. So, uh, to explain further, I have to explain the Kranti Vritta, that is ecliptic. Ecliptic is nothing but the pathway in the sky, horizontal pathway, in the horizontal plan of the sun, in which earth goes around the uh, sun. That is the pathway in which earth goes around the sun. That is ecliptic. In Sanskrit, we, there is a terminology in the very ancient period, Kranti Vritta. This is the celestial pathway in which the earth revolves around the sun with respect to the fixed stars of the 
sky. This is the perimeter of a large wave. You imagine the Earth's pathway is the uh, perimeter of a largest wheel with the sun at the nearly at the center. The Earth at the perimeter. You can see this is a large wheel, sun nearly at center, Earth at the perimeter. That you can imagine. So it is a usually elliptical circle. It is not exactly circle. And in this ecliptic pathway, the earth is moving in a unidirection. It is moving in one direction only. It is not moving up to this and coming backward, again going forward. It is unidirection. Only one direction only it is moving. From here it is like this, like this, like this only. Not like this and coming backward. So the earth position constantly varies in a year. Within a year, the earth position varies. Suppose if we take morning time at sunrise, if earth is today at morning sunrise, if it is here, tomorrow it will be here, definitely not here. So at tomorrow morning sunrise, it will be here. Day after tomorrow, it will be like that. So every day at sunrise, the earth position will vary. Then how many earth position in a year at sunrise? It will be equal to how many sunrise in a year? That we can understand. So the earth position at the ecliptic at sunrise is equal to total number of sunrises within that year. That we can know. So on every day when the sun rises, the new fresh sun rays reaches the earth. So previously there is dark during the night and when sun rises, the, you can imagine are a brilliant and bright sun rays are reaching the earth. So you can imagine that it is a race. You can imagine it is a spoke of a wheel. So on every sunrise, on every sunrise, sun rays are reaching fresh before dark, after dark, complete darkness for 12 hours, sun rays are reaching the earth. So you can imagine they are spokes. So how many spokes will be there? How many sunrise that, that much spokes will be there? How many sunrise? How many new positions of the earth? So the new positions of earth at sunrise equal to sunrise in the total number of sunrise in a year. That will be equal to the total number of rising sun rays reaching the earth. So all three are equal. So the number of earth position at sunrise is equal to number of sunrise within that year. Why I am saying within that year? Because next year it will repeat. So that will be equal to number of spokes of rising sun's rays. Sun rays from the rising sun. So how many sunrise? Ordinarily it will be 365, 366. But Indian ancestors, the Vedic says calculated 360 as a round figure. Why they calculated 360, why not 365, how they corrected it, I will explain later. So there is 360 spokes for one wheel, 360 sankava, 3 sadhana sankava arpidaha shashkirna chala chala saga, that is, that is the mantra. So in turn it means that there are 360 sun rises in one year. So number of spokes will be 360, so number of sun rises within a year 360. What do, you, what do you can, how can you define a day? Surya Siddhanta mentioned, Udayat Udayam Banoho Savanam Tat Prakitata. That means between two consecutive sunrise, that is the duration of one Savana Dina. Savana Dina means civil day. One day is the time interval between two consecutive sunrises. So if there is 360 sunrises in a year, there will be 360 days for one Savana year. One Savana year is one civil year. How they converted into uh, exact number, I will explain later. So, based on this only, number of sunrises in a near round figure, they calculated 360 degrees of a circle and 360 days for one Savana year. That is the calculation. So, thus, in this four mentioned mandra Prithveta mentioned, one circle denotes ecliptic wheel in which Earth revolves around the year, which metaphorically represents one year. 
and toll was denote toll divisions of the perimeter or toll ratio or zodiac sign from that only toll zodiac signs comes why they are dividing that into toll that i will also explain and toll months for a year and 360 spokes denote 360 degree days for one civil year savana year means civil year we can say and 720 children i have already explained 360 day time 360 night time in pairs making 360 days of one civil year so this is the explanation now why toll divisions it is also artificial that perimeter can be divided into 100 or 10 or uh, 20 or 50 like that 25 like that even 5 we can why they uh, uh, vedic rishis uh, divided into toll dwadasa pradaya why they mentioned dwadasa means toll pradaya is arcs of a perimeter because it is toll months for a year why toll months usually in tamil we call moon as tingal in the same way we call month as tingal so it is based on moon only this month gets count we call both moon and month as tingal so earth's one revolution round the sun in terms of time equal to moon's toll synodic revolution around the sun around that sorry so earth if it goes one revolution around the sun in that period moon do toll synodic revolution in the same period so this is one is equal to moon's toll synodic revolution in terms of time for example earth completes one revolution around the sun in 365.25 and 63 days the moon completes one revolution around the sun in sorry this is earth you have to convert into earth it is a spelling mistake in 29.530589 days that is synodic revolution why what is synodic sidereal i will explain so this 365.25 extra divided by 29.53 is equal to 12.3687 something so uh, in a near figure it is 12 that's why there are 12 months per year and this ecliptic is divided into 12 divisions by the vedic scenes it is also astronomically based not just like that they fixed to 12 months per year so that also we should understand so it is scientific it is astronomical the toll division toll rasi toll zodiac sign and toll months per year is also astronomical and natural thing uh, that it is there in india since time immemorial because rigveda is the oldest scripture of the world its time cannot be ex- uh, explained or calculated it is the oldest scripture time immemorial itself in india we calculated toll rasi this zodiac sign concept is there not only during mahabharata ramayana period even since time immemorial before that period itself that we should understand and it is based on astronomy then coming to synodic and sidereal month i got to explain that sidereal first i will explain see this is sun and this is moon this is earth earth is uh, not uh, exactly vertical it is tilted that's why i put this line see moon is revolving around the earth in this e- elliptical pathway and the earth is revolving around the sun in this yellow line elliptical pathway so when earth completes one revolution during that period the moon completes revolution 12 times that is synodic revolution because on seeing from earth the moon and sun are in conjunction in the same longitude but when earth moves like this apparently we are seeing sun is moving like that so when earth comes here in one month moon sun would have gone here so this moon even though it completes one revolution it has to here it has come it has to move little bit so that it will be in conjunction with sun sun is situated here and moon as instead of here it has to come here if you shift this whole picture into here the moon has to instead of here it has to come here 
so it takes some time so it is 2.25 days more it takes that is synodic synodic means in conjunction sidereal means it is based on this ecliptic star so moon is here in this ecliptic star even if the earth goes here it will be in conjunction in 27.321 days that is one sidereal month and for synodic month it will take another 2.25 days so it is 29.5 days that is the difference between synodic and sidereal month we are calculating in india this synodic month only we are take because we give more important to tidi amavasya pournami so we are taking synodic based on that synodic month only it is tidi is calculated so we are adopting that since time immemorial so they used this 29.53 at the synodic month and dividing it it is approximately 12 that's why there are 12 divisions in 12 months per year it is also scientific and astronomical and this 360 nights i am saying it is 360 degree not only the 360 days is there is any evidence for that as taitriya samkida krishna yajurveda in this mantra it mentions 360 stotriya verses for recitation for 360 nights of a year samvatsara here is mentioned as samvatsara so this is 360 days concept proved by krishna yajurveda and rigveda and also rigvedic mantra 11th mantra 720 pass so in that way it is explained and also three seasons three double seasons also proves this and this calculation of 360 days for one civil year it is based on yuga calculation and it is calculated by observing heliacal rising of the stars i got to explain these two aspects first i will explain what is heliacal rising <coughs> suppose earth is revolving around the sun in the sky how can we uh, came to understand that earth completed one revolution that is the duration of one year suppose earth starts here and completed one revolution it is only sky we cannot write something on the sky and if it comes to same place we can understand nothing we cannot do in roads we can put it. but uh, in ground we can put if the circle completes we can put on sign there and but in sky we cannot put instead of putting a sky already nature has yes, our god almighty has put on sign based on that our ancestors in indian ancestors calculated they used to this is the ecliptic pathway of the earth around the sun and this is this yellow and the red line it is a belt you can see this is known as ecliptic belt in which earth revolves around the sun this ecliptic belt the nakshatra the stars within this ecliptic belt not situated in this area suppose here or here thousands of light years in the same horizontal plane in the same horizontal plane they are situated here nakshatra that is divided into 27 nakshatra and the prominent nakshatra is known as junction junction nakshatras junction star or yogatara suppose earth is here and we can fix that earth is in conjunction with this nakshatra or sun and this nakshatra is in conjunction so we can because stars are ecliptic stars are stable not moving earth only moving as far as earth is concerned they are stable but as far as universe concerned they are also moving as far as we are concerned they are stable so we have to compare the movement of a constantly moving object with the stationary object we have to compare jeevatma with paramatma that is lagu guru naya we have to compare lagu with guru only guru is larger lagu is smaller so which is moving its movement should be assessed based on the position of the stationary object so we are using this stars so that we can identify that the earth has completed one revolution but there is one problem is that earth is rotating on its own axis like this so these stars ecliptic stars also in every 24 hours we can able to see all the 24 stars so that causes problem how to identify 
so we can fix some ashwini or some nakshatra here so and earth is here in uh, that nakshatra is in conjunction with the sun so from here if you see that ashwini so again one revolution and when ashwini nakshatra is there we can come to but in 24 hours ashwini nakshatra every day it will come down so we have to need additional reference point for that we have taken sun because sun is also as far as earth is concerned stationary when our ancestors used these two stationary they know that heliocentric concept also and there is one difference between sun reference point and ecliptic star reference point that also formed the basis of this heliocentric assessment of year because earth is revolving around the sun and not revolving around this ecliptic star ecliptic star is outside this ecliptic belt it is in the horizontal plane of the belt but it is outside so it is not revolving around this ecliptic star but it is revolving around the sun and this sun and ecliptic star are both are stationary based on these three facts our ancestors calculated the time required or how many sun rises within one revolution of the earth around the sun that is the concept so this is the heliocentric rising of the star for any one star in the ecliptic for example krithika nakshatra there will be one only one heliocentric rising in the whole year this is mentioned by taitriya brahmana so you don't uh, we cannot say that it is uh, modern astronomy concept that the heliocentric rising no taitriya brahmana in this mantra it mentions the special importance of heliocentric rising of the stars in vedic ritual and it is punya to visualize it is punya this is the text i uh, thank the author and publisher of this thing uh, in this rishi mentioned this heliocentric rising with the word upa vyusham udaya that is just before the sunrise is surya udedi upa vyum so before just before sunrise what star rises that rising of the star is known as upa vyusham udaya so it is mentioned in taitriya brahmana itself so it is a very age old indian concept heliocentric rising so with this figure i can explain how these three things are important what that base uh, causes the base for to identify the one complete revolution of the earth see earth is revolving around the sun like this and this is the star we can say it is krithika nakshatra this is sun you imagine sun is small very small so earth also rotates on its own axis that is also there so when earth rotation comes on this part sun rises but this star is slightly above this sun so this star first rises after that just a few seconds after that sun rises so any star rising just before the sun rise is known as heliocentric rising or upa vyusham udaya that is the terminology sanskrit terminology so this is the thing this occurs only once why because earth is revolving around the sun and not revolving around the star star is outside the revolution so when the earth goes like this we are seeing apparently sun is going like this moving like this down when earth going up sun is moving like that when we go in train we are moving but only the objects outside are moving backwards that is the same thing so it is an apparent movement of the sun so when earth from here if it comes here when it rotates like this the star will rise but the sun since it has moved here it has to move, rotate further so that to for the rise of the sun not just at this point it has to rotate because sun is here so it has to come here so a little bit more time is required for sun to rise after the rise of the self same star that is krithika nakshatra how much time difference it is 4 minutes why 4 minutes sun rot- uh, earth rotates on its own axis for 360 degree in 24 hours sun revolves around the uh, earth revolves around the sun 1 degree per day 
so it has to move 360 instead of 360 361 degree because sun has moved 1 degree so 361 degree 360 degrees 24 minutes uh, 24 hours means 1 degree to just 4 minutes that is 4 minutes delay every day the sun rise will be delayed by 4 seconds after this self stamp start 4 seconds it is 4 seconds so that means every day the same star rises before sun by 4 seconds before that is the thing 4 seconds so the earth takes 23 hours 56 minutes to rotate on its one complete rotation 360 degree but for sun to rise it has to rotate 361 degree so 24 hours is needed just 4 minutes above this 23 hours is 56 minutes so this is known as nakshatra dina this is known as solar dina that is the important thing so this every day 4 minutes earlier means sorry 4 minutes in one month there is 2 hours and after 6 months it is 12 hours earlier see in 6 months earth revolves around here and it comes here when this position rotation position the self same star rises but at that same time sun sets so the star rising at the time of sun setting that is known as acronical rising like that if the earth revolves around again here when the earth comes here again this self same star kartika nakshatra rises just before the rise of the sun heliacal rising so based on that for every star there will be only one heliacal rising in a year suppose if the earth starts revolving around the sun here if you observe that kritika nakshatra rises just before sunrise why we are calling just before the sunrise at the time will be night and you can visualize the star rising at the eastern horizon so when it comes to rotate like this and again comes here only again this kritika nakshatra will rise in the eastern horizon <clears throat> just before sunrise so few seconds before sunrise so when we observe eastern horizon every day when we see that kritika nakshatra is rising at the east just before sunrise we can damn sure that earth has completed one revolution and one year has gone so we can count how many number of sun rises during this one revolution that is the total number of sun rises in that year so what surya siddhanta says that day is in between two consecutive sun rise so that will be the total number of sun uh, solar days in a year so based on that only our ancestors calculated how many days per one year so 365 to 366 sun rises so they came you were near figure 360 for one circle of uh, one circles degree and also one civil year 360 days that is the base we can understand this and why this 365 instead of why they kept 360 they know 365 or some year 366 sunrise why they kept 360 not only because it is a round figure there is another compulsion is that it is based on yuga calculation that is there so for that only they are used for example we can see in aryabattiyam aryabatta in this kalakriya padakas verse 7 it mentions ravivarsham manushyam tadapi trimsat gunam bhavi bhavadi pitriyam pitriyam dwadasa gunidam divyam varsham vinirishtam that means a solar year is the year of men ravi varsham ravi is solar varsham manushyam manushyam means human being so one solar year is the year of men tadabi trimsat gunam we have to multiply trimsat means 30 gunam means multiplication bhavadi pitriyam that is 30 times is the 30 days will be the uh, one pitru 30 times of this is the year of pitru pitru is ancestors who have passed away so that is 30 times 
and pitriyam dvadasa gunidam dvadasa means 12 gunidam means 12 so 12 times of a pitru is the divine year or year of god that means 360 years of man is equal to one year of god based on that so they calculated 360 is the days for god and ancestors for one year so they applied it to earth also human beings also that is why it is 360 but how can we accept that one year of god is equal to for us 360 years is it scientific that also we have to analyze but luckily albert einstein in his general theory of relativity in 1915 common era that is more than 107 years he proved that time is inversely proportional to mass when a mass mass is different from weight mass is the density density of a celestial object if it increases the time will go slow so inversely proportional that is the general theory of relativity of albert einstein so when in mass increases time slows that means this pitru loka the world of pitru is 30 times more mass than earth and god their earth is their uh, residence place is their celestial body is 360 times more mass than earth more dense that's why our 360 year is equal to one year for god and our 30 year is equal to one year for our ancestor it is known as time dilation in modern science when the mass increases time will go slow the clock will stuck slowly that is the thing so based on this we can explain this aryabhatta yamandra so this general theory of relativity and its application our ancestors indian ancestors know much uh, uh, thousands of years before itself so based on this only 360 year days per one god and 360 days per one ancestor so they apply to human being and earth also so that's why they calculated 360 days per one civil year and that is the thing mentioned in sisya divridhi de tandram and surya siddhanta everything it mentioned but if you apply instead of 365.25 as 360 the season will vary because uh, every year there will be lapse of 5 51.25 days so in some 100 years how many difference will be there ex uh, wrong calculation will lead and the seasons will vary so whether indian ancestors knew that earth not revolves around the sun in 360 days but it takes 365.25 days that one question second thing even if they knew it whether they corrected it they applied it in the everyday life and corrected and followed a correct calculation that two things are arises now it is surya siddhanta mentioned in a mahayuga 43 lakhs 20000 years the star apparent rotation of the star due to earth's rotation on its axis from west to east they rotate apparently from east to west this much time so this is known as nakshatra dina for this much year so what is the nakshatra dina 366.258756 what is the solar dina because i told in every day the sun has to rotate 361 degree to sun rays so there is a delay of 1 degree so in 360 uh, degrees rotation of one circle there will be delay of 360 degree the sun rotates in one day 360 degree so every day every year there will be the solar dina is less by one day so in 43 lakhs 20000 years this much less will be the total number of solar dina if you divide it by the total number of years it will come to 365.25 only so this is the 366.25 is the nakshatra dina that is sidereal days and solar year is 365.25 8756
but both are equal if you calculate the duration of one year both are equal how it is different no but they both are equal how i say because one nakshatra dina is 4 minutes less than solar dina so that equalizes so 366.25 into 23 hours 56 minutes is equal to 365.25 into 24 hours so both are equal but nakshatra dina is 4 minutes less because star rises every day 4 minutes earlier that heliacal rising i explained so the indian ancestors even though they mentioned 360 as the total number of days per one civil year they know exactly how many days per one year that is 365.258756 and they knew it they applied it also they corrected it also where is the evidence for that correction so this is the difference between nakshatra and solar dina because earth rotates 360 degree at this point sun rises and this star also rises but earth moves one degree every day by its revolution around the sun so sun apparently moves back so the sun uh, earth has to rotate 361 degree every day in 360 days it rotates 361 into 360 360 degrees so 360 degree rotation is equal to one day that's why this number of solar day per year is less one from the star days that we can understand so now whether they knew it we proved that they knew it based on suri siddhanta whether they have corrected it that we have done uh, prove it so there are ordinarily 365 sunrises in one year in some year it is 366 that we call it as a leap year if we calculate 360 days for one seven year the seasonal period tend to vary how they corrected indian ancestors the rishis of veda period they conducted panjaratra yagna as mentioned in krishna yajurveda taitriya samkhita in 7 for five days pancha means five ratra means night so for five days they conducted one yagna one uh, will be we can say yagna or uh, some uh, pouring akudi over the fire fire altar they keep and they conducted for five days on the sixth day only counted as the first day of the next savanaya so from 360 they raised to 365 but 2.25 is still there no lacking for that they do it gavam ayana it is also mentioned in krishna yajurveda taitriya samkhita 751 six days excess of 360 it mentioned in some year where go is the intercalary day that is excess day go means not pow here it means intercalary day which is the product of four quarter days because 365.25 now excess of 0.25 for four years, four quarter days, that makes one day. So, in the fourth consecutive solar year, it is added every fourth year, making 366 days. It is also mentioned in Rig Veda. So, this Indian ancestors, they knew, even though they calculated 360 days per one civil year, they knew it is 360.258786. And also they corrected it and applied in the day-to-day -day life. So the seasons will not vary. So they knew it, they corrected it. That is the result of our analysis. Why the earth rotates? Why, why in yoga calculation, we are saying in Pitru Loka and other Loka, other uh, celestial objects, it's only 360 days. Why only in earth it is 365.25, very fraction? Now, in modern science, that particle physics mentioned, there is a symmetry breaking phenomenon exists in Earth. No absolute 100% symmetry exists in Earth. Earth, it will not be completely perfect. Only perfect person is Almighty. All human beings are slightly imperfect. So, like that, this universe, the Earth are also slightly imperfect. So, there is a symmetry breaking phenomenon. For example, if you take your body, the, your left half and right half will not be perfect, at least symmetry. Slight variation will be there. 
So because of that symmetry breaking phenomenon, the earth revolves around the sun, not in exactly 360 days, but 365.25 in the ancient modern calculation, 63004 days. So this is the 360 is based on your calculation and this is the actual thing and our ancestors knew it and adapted it and corrected it. So because of this symmetry breaking phenomenon only, the concept of Maha Yuga and calculation of 43 lakhs 20,000 years emerged in India. Because all the planets and other graha revolving around the sun, they will not complete one revolution in exact integral number. Every year their number is in fraction. For example, sun, moon, you see moon's apogee, it is in 43 lakh 20,000 years, it is 4 lakhs 88,209. You cannot reduce it. It is not divisible. So only if you take 43 lakhs 20,000 only, everything will be in integral number. That's why the Indian ancestors adopted the calculation of Maha Yuga of 43 lakhs 20,000 years. This I will explain more in more detail in the next thing. So this is the calculation, 360 days for one civil or Savana year. And this is 365.2421 is tropical year. The Sanskrit terminology is Sayana Sauravarsha. And 256363 is Nirayana Sauravarsha. And this is synodic lunar year. I showed that the synodic month consists of 29.53. There are 12 months, so it is 354.36. The difference is more than 10 days. That has been corrected by Indian ancestors by lunis cycle, uh, solar cycle and uh, include intercalary Adhigamasa is included. That I explain in the next part. So I have to explain now what is tropical air, what is sidereal, why the difference is. See, the earth is tilted by 23.27 degree. It is not exactly like this. It is tilted. And it revolves around the sun in this yellow line. But what is this is the cutting point of celestial equator and also this ecliptic. Why this celestial equator is tilted? Because the earth is tilted. This celestial equator, nothing but the extension of earth's equator, Bhumadhya Rekha. This is Kamadhya Rekha. So, because of this earth's tilting by 23.27 degree, this celestial equator is also tilted to this ecliptic by 23.27. This much tilt is there. So, these two circles cut at two points, one at vernal equinox, another one autumn equinox. This is summer solstice, is the winter solstice. Uh, this is Uttrayana, this is Dakshinayana. So, this cutting point is not constant. As per modern science, it is precision of equinox. It is moving backward like this. So, when earth starting revolving around the sun, if it comes here, that is completion of one year. That is 365.25, 63 days. But because this cutting point moves slightly backwards, if the earth starts rounding, revolving around the sun, if it comes here itself, this cutting point will come because it has moved a little bit. That's why this tropical air is 365.2421, it is 2563. So there is a minimum difference and the tropical air is less because this movement of the cutting point, that is vernal equinox from here to here, that is the difference. But our ancestors took the reference point as this yellow line, that is ecliptic, and the modern astronomy took this point as the reference point. Why our ancestors, uh, Indian ancestors took this as a reference point, I will answer in the next session. So this is the difference. And because this is an important point, because the total divisions of the perimeter, that is ecliptic, Dvadasa Pradaya, as per Vigbeta, I mentioned, 
this major zodiac sign starts from here this is ashwini nakshatra bharani nakshatra kritika nakshatra so this is not shifting it is constant that mesha rishabha mithuna like that it is constant in indian astronomy so whenever the earth enters or the sun enters when earth comes here the sun enters into this mesha that is the chit chaitra month in indian astronomy so this chaitra month will not move back chaitra month is constant when sun enters into ashwini nakshatra that is the beginning of the chaitra month but in modern astronomy this vasanta that is uh, spring season that will start from this cutting point season will start from this cutting point since this moves little bit here the spring season starts from here but this chaitra month is always here because mesha zodiac sign is fixed and ashwini and bharani nakshatra they are immovable as far as earth is concerned so it is fixed so in hindu astronomy this zodiac sign is that is mesa is fixed whereas in modern astronomy the first zodiac sign here is moves backward because they are taking this line that is celestial equator as the reference point so when it cuts here here the year is starts so for them the year is is moving backward but for indian astronomy this mesha zodiac sign is fixed whenever the sun enters into mesha then only it is chaitra month so in indian astronomy the month will not vary based on this vernal equinox but in western modern astronomy it will vary so when there is cutting point is here this is meena zodiac sign so when earth is here sun is in conjunction with meena so that vasanta ritu or this uh, spring season will start in palguna month not in chaitra month so this month also changes that is the basic thing between the comparison between indian astronomy and modern astronomy so in indian astronomy it reference point is ecliptic so the month will not vary but if you apply this cutting point the precision of equinox the season will vary and will occur in different month not in the same month that is the th- important thing we have to know so this is the difference between nirayana and sayana the indian astronomy is nirayana ayana means this movement this movement of this backwards is ayana so nirayana means no ayana we are not taking into consideration of that movement sa ayana with mo- that movement we are taking into consideration of that movement so in now the precision is 24 degree so this vernal equinox is at uttara bhatra bada nakshatra that is in meena zodiac sign so the spring season starts now in palguna month itself palguna sixth day itself the spring season starts but the chaitra month will start only after 24 days that is the difference so whenever there is change in the precision the month changes in modern astronomy but in indian astronomy the month will not change that is the important thing but surya siddhanta mentions modern astronomy mentions that this things rotates all 360 degree it is going backward only completes on revolution in 25800 years that is the velocity they are calculated but in surya siddhanta what it mentions this point will not rotate like this it will go forward 27 degree again come backward and again move backward for 27 degree again move come here so it will oscillate like this only it will not move backward that is the concept given by surya siddhanta so that means the month will not vary even when the precision of equinox changes and the season will be almost same just 27 days earlier or 27 days later in 1800 years so people will not notice that because duration is 1800 years so this is the base so based on that see this surya siddhanta mentions this zero degree mesha is the 
cutting point and this cutting point moves to 27 degree mesa again coming back and again going back to mean a 3 degree and again coming to zero degree that is the thing suri siddhanta mentioned in uh, it will take 7200 years so the velocity is 54 seconds per year that is the calculation maha aryabhatta siddhanta also mentioned this what is this implication means uh, this is a very old text published in 1825 from chennai that is the british officials who are residing in chennai based on the consultation between from the experienced aged indian astronomers they wrote this book kala sankalita kala means we know town time so time measurements as per indian southern parts of india in that it mentioned this surya siddhanta calculation only it is mentioned so indian astronomers 200 years before they used this only not precision of equinox that is an evidence that book is downloadable you can download kala sankalita it is available and what is the thing that favors this oscillation instead of precision means even modern science we can show evidence see this is the uh, tropic of cancer or tropic of capricorn anything we can take this the tilting of the earth's axis varies from 22.1 degree to 24.5 degree it is not constant now it is 23.27 or 23 degree 27 minutes like that but it is not constant in 41000 years from 22.1 it will move up and again come down to 22.1 up to 24.5 it moves move up and comes so this is oscillation so this is due to the tilting of the axis and this cutting of this point is actually due to this tilting only so the tropic of cancer movement from 22.1 to 24.5 it is also due to the change in the degree of this tilting and this cutting point also due to the ch- tilting of this axis so both are related only that's why because the tropic of cancer oscillates so it favors the oscillation of this vernal equinox only not revolution that we should understand even modern science uh, actually favors this oscillation of surya siddhanta only so i already explained for nirayana method indian months will be same but in modern astronomy due to precession of equinox for every 2000 years season will change by one month because the rate of precession is 71.6 year 1 degree or 50.46 uh, seconds per year so in 5100 years that is 3100 bc some say it is a year of mahabharata 2.5 months will be changed some says it is 7500 years is the year of mahabharata so there is 3.75 months almost 4 month change will be there if you apply precision of equinox but actually what has this is a zero degree precision mentioned by kalidasa and the various authors it is not constant you see from 0 to 532 so we cannot estimate when there is zero degree precision what is the velocity what is the value itself is questionable even now we cannot have uniform uh, consensus among scholars so this shows that uh, during ramayana and during mahabharata period the season has to change but as per evidence from ramayana vasanta ritu is in chaitra month as per ayodhya kandam kishkinda kandam and sundra kandam all these shows shows that vasanta ritu is in the same chaitra month there is no month variation and varsha ritu as per kishkinda kandam uh, that is it is shravana month shravana month is the beginning of the varsha ritu uh, because rama after killing vali he stayed there in kishkinda in the cave for uh, because it is rainy season and that is, they mentioned it is shravana month and shravana and vatra bata month are the varsha ritu and sarad ritu is kritika kartika month 
that Kartik and Asva use a month are the Saradritu, Ramayana mentioned same thing. So there is no seasonal variation, there is no month. So it favors only oscillation, not precision of equinox. Because Ramayana happened some thousands and thousands of years. Makabharata also it mentioned in Udhyoga Parva and Vana Parva, the Saradritu is in Kartika month. No, no month change. So it also favors oscillation of peak national. Vedanga Jodhism also mentioned the Uttrayana and Dachnayana, that is a tropic of cancer at which the sun raises. It is only 293.20 degree. Uh, that is only less than 23 degree, 20 minute, not less than 27 degree. So if it crosses 27 degree only, we can say that Surya Siddhanta is wrong. Because Surya Siddhanta mentions up to 27 degree it moves. But it is only 23 degree, 20 minute, less than 27 degree. So here also the Asleza also mentions less than 27 degree. So Vedanga Jodhisa also favors Surya Siddhanta only. Varagi Mira also mentioned in Brihat Samkita, during ancestor period, it is only 23 degree, 20 minute, less than 27 degree, not more than 27 degree. So he also confirms Surya Siddhanta only. And during Varagi Mira period, it is exactly at 90 degree and 270 degree. So thus, 0 degree Ayanamsa. There is the modern year is coincides with the Indian Mesha. That is the vernal equinox is exactly at the Mesa 0 degree at Ashwini Nakshatra. What is that period? Kalidasa in his Jyotir Vidavarana mentioned it is at 105 BCE. That is 445 Sakaira. That is Sairas era. It was 0 degree Ayanamsa. So this was that Varagimira and Kalidasa lived in 1st century BCE. So this is the proof for favoring oscillation of uh, concept of Surya Siddhanta not precision. But whether it is oscillation or precision, when we will know? Because the rate of precision at present is 71.6 year 1 degree. It is now precision, they are saying 24 degree. It has to reach 27 degree, 3 degree more. So maybe 200 to 250 years. After 200 to 250 years, if the equinox moves backward, continuously moving as if now backwards, then it is precision. If it changes its direction, moves forward to zero degree Mesa, then it is oscillation. Only at that time, we can come to understand whether it is oscillation or precision. But as per Indian astronomy, it is oscillation and proved by Ramayana, Mahaparata and various astronomical texts. So with that, in the first part, I can conclude. So in this lecture, I have shown that the concept of 360 degree, and the 12 months of year and the concept of 365.25 day, days and also told zodiac sign are based on astronomy only. That is the revolution of the earth around the sun and also moon's revolution around the earth. So those two basic concepts of astronomy that is celestial movement only, Indian ancestors during the period of Veda they calculated 360 degree for one circle and told divisions of the perimeter at 12 months or told zodiac sign and 365.2563 days per one year. So it is a gift of Indian ancestors to the entire world. But another interesting thing is Rigveda Mandra mentioned in this 5th Mandala, 40th Sutta, 5th to 9th Mandra that Swarbanu is eclipsing sun, causing darkness in the world. Who is that Swarbhanu? There is two meaning. One is Swarbhanu is an Asura who was cut by the Chakrayuta of Vishnu into Rahu and Ketu. Who is Rahu and Ketu? The ascending and descending node of moon. That is Chandrapada, two part of moon. So it is related to moon. And another meaning as the Dayananda Saraswati is the object, the celestial object that receives sunlight. We know moon only receives sunlight and reflects back so that we can able to see Pavarnami, full moon. So the moon objects the sunlight rays reaching the earth, causing darkness in the world. 
So that much accuracy, exact scientific thing was mentioned in Rig Veda Mandra itself. But this is not the subject of this talk. So in future, I can, in Hindu astronomy, if there is a chance, I will lecture on this and I will detail. So in this lecture, I have told all these 360 degrees concept, 360 days, and told months and told zodiac sign and other concepts based on Earth's and Moon's revolution. The same thing, Earth's revolution and Moon's revolution formed the basis for the calculation of the divisions of a day, time calculation. The angular movement, the angular velocity of Earth and Moon is the basis for the calculation of minute time units, that is para, vinadika, gadika, and also day. That is Natchatra Dina, Lunar Day and Solar Day. Not only that, that is the basis for the calculation for this weeks of uh, seven day per week. Why that Sunday is named as Sunday? Why Monday comes after Sunday? Why that order is mentioned? And also, interestingly, Ari but shows that this velocity of the Earth is related to the time required to pronounce alphabets. That also related. How much time we require to pronounce on letter alphabet is based on the time required for in the movement of the earth in the revolution for moving one second, second of all. That is, there is relation based on that only time required for pronouncing alphabets are evolved in India. Not only that, the human beings respiratory rate, that also related to the Earth's revolution around the Earth. That is an interesting thing. Not only this minute time calculation, even month yuga calculation and also larger time calculations like Manvandra and Kalpa, that also based on the celestial revolution of the moon, Earth and also solar system including sun and also Milky Way galaxy. So all these Indian astronomies developed, evolved scientifically and it has an astronomical base and accurate calculation is still that there is no leap year calculation in Indian astronomy. And why Saitra month is fixed as Pat month, everything they have clarity, knowledge. So based on high knowledge and wisdom and accurate understanding of the astronomy and nature, Indian astronomers developed Indian time calculation exactly in coincidence with the velocity of the Earth's movement. So that angular velocity, degree of angle, that is totally related to time calculation. That I will explain in the next part. So I actually thanks once again to Sri Aditya Ji and also the volunteers of Satology and also those persons who listened patiently this is my lecture and those who are going to listen in YouTube. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ji Adi Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, my question to you is like in the Bhagavad Puran and other places in the, when you talk about the sun's movement, mm. it is mentioned very poetically that the sun is riding on a chariot with his axis point connected to Meru Parvat and going from the eastern direction of Meru Parvat, going south, and then coming through the west of Astachal, and then coming away. So the movement is of the sun is mentioned, not of the earth. So how do you reconcile that with the, with the western model, which is based around the sun, and the Vedic model is totally, the sun is moving. Most of the no, sun is Vedic moving. model also mentions Earth only moves around sun. So we, when it is theory, theory is earth is moving around the sun by heliocentric concept. For example, in Panjanga, you see Bhagrakati, Bhagranevati. That is apparent retrograde motion of the Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. If you analyze that, it will definitely show that Indian astronomy is heliocentric only. So, but on practical, if you want to understand what is the effect of Mars on a human being living on Earth, 
you have to take a reference point as earth only suppose if the mars is at 30 degree from sun but if you see from earth it is 120 degree the effect of mars will be different when it is at 30 degree when it is 120 degree so if you take heliocentric theory exactly applied practically then you have to think that mars is at 30 degree but actually from earth it is 120 degree so if you take earth as a center only then if you calculate what is the position of mars then only you can understand what is its effect on the human being nature of earth so for that for practical application of day to day life and also for finding out our species time yagadasi yagadasi means it should be 12 into 10 that is 120 degree to 130 degree the angle difference between sun and moon from where the reference point from earth so if to find out yagadasi itself you have to take earth as a reference point and you have to assess what is the angle of sun or what is the angle of moon then only you can find out yagadasi on to do vrata so for that practical as finding out our species time finding out the effect of planets or graha on the human beings we are applying this geocentric model but our ancestors knew it is only heliocentric if you thoroughly study indian astronomy all astronomical texts it is only heliocentric so bhagavata purana is for devotees for bhakta so what it mentions is this only for example purana mentions that ragu is a demon he engulf sun so there will be dark so rigveda i mentioned swarbanu he is araka maya asura asura he engulfs that is for layman but for scientific people it is moon so rigveda refers both moon and asura so like that we have to understand there are hidden things in veda also veda is totally scientific and if you analyze today only i referred veda how much science is there i astonished so veda is not only spiritual not only philosophy it is entirely scientific and it mentions only heliocentric veda mentioned that the sun is important and earth revolves around the sun that also mentioned in veda and also the same reference is in mahabharat also yes same reference in mahabharat and if you study in the yajur veda similar yes. references are there yes and which creates uh, same references like bhagavat purana same references in in yajur veda same references in mahabharat same reference in ramayana also so uh, you know for people to understand it's it's better to go through the shloka and research yourself also there are many studies available on google and uh, yes. youtube also you can refer to them and uh, people who have doubts on that can refer to these shloka but you have to understand from a a uh, person who really understands the planetary movements and mm. uh, but you will be shocked to know that one thing this distances are pretty accurately mentioned in all the vedas which gradually the science comes there so science is following the veda not veda is following the science yes yes <laughs> so thank you so much dr one at eight if you imagine how one at eight is important it yes. is a distance yes. between sun and moon sun and earth and also the diameter of the three Yeah. If you apply that one at eight, around one at eight, it becomes. So it's our ancestors knew everything. It's a multiple of one at eight. Yes, one at eight. So thank you all for joining, and thank you, Dr. Raja, for coming and sharing. And uh, anyone has any comments, please do over there. Dr. Raja replies usually. So namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.